Hello and welcome to the 805 Focus, where we focus on the people, the topics and the events that matter to the South Coast. I'm Christine Davis from TV Santa Barbara. Here at TVSB, we're big supporters of local non-profit organisations. One such group that's doing some great work here in the Santa Barbara area is the CEC. And here to join us today to discuss the topic, we've got some great guys. Jefferson Litton from the CEC, welcome. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. Sean Jacobson from Allen Energy and Michael Chiakis, a happy solar energy customer. <laughs> So Jefferson, tell me, for those who don't know much about the CEC, what do you guys do? So the Community Environmental Council is a small local nonprofit. We're based here in Santa Barbara. We've been around for 45 years. We were founded in the wake of the 1969 oil spill. So basically, in those 45 years, we've been developing solutions to the region's most challenging environmental challenges. So you know, one thing that we've done that we point to is curbside recycling. So curbside recycling that we all enjoy across the state now actually started as a pilot program that CEC started. Um, we've also done watershed restoration centers, hazardous waste collection centers, and founded the nation's first and 43 subsequent Earth Day celebrations. Oh, that's fantastic. That started here in Santa Barbara. That started here in Santa Barbara, yeah. A lot of people don't know that. No. Yeah. And um, just going back to the curbside recycling program, some people don't know what that is. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so curbside recycling, where you know now we all enjoy that we can just put our recycling in a bin and they'll come and take it away. So that started as a pilot program here in Santa Barbara that CEC developed. We were able to expand that program to the county and then go to the state level and lobby at the state so that now across California and across the entire nation, people enjoy curbside recycling. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. Yeah, it's funny to think that that wasn't there no, I mean, a number now, of years ago. One of those things that people take for granted now, but you know, now it's just nice to see that sort of evolution. Yeah. yeah. Now, I know another big area you guys have been working on is with solar energy mm -hmm. and there was a big there has been a big program Solarize Santa Barbara tell me a little bit about that yeah a big push for the Community Environmental Council is around all sorts of renewable energy and really the most accessible form of renewable energy to homeowners today is solar energy so we've run our Solarize program um, now we've actually run Solarize in seven different communities including Santa Barbara uh, and the Solarize program has helped 300 homeowners go solar on the Central Coast. Great. Yeah. And what does solarizing, going solar, mean for these customers? Well, going solar means a lot of things. I mean, one, you gain the environmental benefits of going solar. You're, you're generating your own electricity without any emissions associated. But you're also capturing huge financial savings from going solar. So on your everyday utility bills, you're seeing those savings. And you gain a little bit of independence from the utility, which is nice. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, Sean, you're with Allen Energy. Mm -hmm. Please firstly tell me a little bit about Allen Energy yeah. and then how you guys have been working with the CEC on the Solarize Santa Barbara program. Yeah, thank you for having me today. Our company, Allen Energy, is a division of uh, Allen Associates. And Dennis Allen, our founder, actually got into green building and energy efficient design during the oil embargo around the same time the CEC got founded. So we have about 30 years of experience doing green building, energy efficient construction, passive solar, and then solar uh, projects here in Santa Barbara and the Central Coast. So Allen Energy was actually founded to focus on providing energy efficiency and renewable energy to existing and new homeowners in the area. So we both help fix old houses and help them get powered by the sun, but also on our new construction projects, we act as consultants and work with new Title 24 codes that are very stringent in terms of energy design um, to make sure that we're building to code, but also really setting the bar and building way better than code. So we're really trying to constantly look at new technologies and new, uh, new methods and, and techniques to, to build better um, and to reduce our dependency on fossil fuels. And then we find that it both uh, helps the environment, which is a big part of our mission as a company, but it also helps the, uh, the bottom line of the homeowners for their, their home operational costs for many years to come. So part of the, the reason we were chosen um, as one of the partners with the Solarize program was because of our longstanding history as a, a reputable contractor in town. Also a really good price, so part of the Solarize program is its group discount pricing. 
So we come in, we look at our bottom line, and we say, yeah, we'll, we'll be willing to, to reduce our costs if we can get everyone in Santa Barbara to go solar together. Right. And, and that's really the, the big benefit of the Solaris program is it's the community coming together for a cause, go solar, you know, save money at home, help the environment, help, help the community at large become less dependent on fossil fuels. But then also a little bit of, of a donation comes back from our marketing funds for all of Jefferson's work to help keep the, the CEC going um, and to help fund future programs so we can continue to do group discount programs for the coast. Wonderful. And I hear that's one of the benefits of the Solarize program is that a lot of people in the past have probably thought this would be a great idea, great for the environment, great to save money, but how much is it going to cost me to get it done? Whereas this has made it accessible to a lot more people, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah. And it, the vetting process was a big part of this too. There's a few contractors that have been chosen in the past and it uh, makes it a lot easier for a homeowner to choose to go solar when they know that these guys have looked at our books. They've, they made sure we're a company that's going to provide really good customer service, quality of workmanship, and we're going to be around for a long time to, to service our, our systems and to answer any questions. So it makes the process easier and cheaper, which is really a big obstacle for homeowners to go solar. Absolutely. Now you have something very fancy in front of you. Yeah. Please tell me what is that and how does it work? So many, uh, many people probably have seen solar panels on roofs and um, maybe commercials, it's becoming very uh, mainstream these days. Um, this is a, just a sample of a solar electric panel. And what we have here is essentially, it's just a frame, it's a, a metal frame. Again, it's a sample, so this is quite a bit smaller than the, the main panels, they're about three by five. Um, each panel will produce, the large panels, the non-samples will produce between 250 to 300 watts these days. Um, we could get into that you know, deeper into how that actually attributes to savings, but Based on how much power you consume on the house, we determine how many panels you need. Um, so average number of panels between 10 to 30 panels is kind of between the size of the house and what type of consumption you have. So this panel, we put it on the roof, the sun strikes these cells, and what happens is the sunlight gets converted into electricity. It's kind of magic. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, so tell us a little bit yeah. more about that. How yeah, so, so it's called the photoelectric process. So essentially what happens is the sunlight hits the cells, it creates electrons, uh, it makes the electrons kind of get excited. The electrons then get conducted through the wires that are in the cells and they all are connected together in, in various different series and parallel connections that end up on these wires on the back. So these wires essentially create direct current power. That direct current power is the same as that's on your laptop or on your phone or on a, a flashlight that has a battery in there. Uh, that direct current power then needs to get inverted to AC power, which is what's used in our grid. If you've heard of the Tesla Edison war of currents, um, it's something that uh, in our industrial revolution, we determined that AC was a better way of, of transmitting power throughout our cities. Um, so we have to convert the sun power to AC power through an inverter, and that inverter then can connect to the main electric service panel on the house, and essentially powers everything in the house when the sun's shining, and it'll even power more, it'll provide more power than you're using in your home, and that power then goes back through the meter, and you get credit for that power that you produce. So you're able to gain credits on your bill for those days that you're not around, you produce a lot of power, and then you use those credits on, on the, maybe at night or on the, a rainy day or in the, in the winter time, when you're not producing as much solar power, you can use those credits. So we're able to pretty much offset, if customers want to, 100% of their annual energy consumption by putting a certain number of panels on the roof. Fantastic. Just completely get rid of the electricity you know, uh, impact and needs of that, of that homeowner. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, I'll get you to pop that back on the yeah. table so you don't have to hold it all day. Um, well, someone who has actually benefited from this program and has solarized here in Santa Barbara is Michael. Michael, tell us a little bit about your background and just a little bit about your the process that you went through. Yeah, I'm very committed to the environment. I've always done things like recycled and rode my bike to work and tried to eat lower on the food chain or grow my own uh, fruits and vegetables. But two of the really biggest things that um, we can do to cut our carbon footprint are electricity and um, you know, w what we drive. 
Um, and so about three and a half years ago, I bought a small house in Santa Barbara and I was excited to then you know, be able to go solar. Uh, my bill was pretty low though, it was only about $40 a month. So it wasn't really at the top of the home improvement list because it has a little longer payback. Um, and then uh, about a year and a half ago, I uh, got an electric car, a Chevrolet Volt. And um, suddenly I didn't have to buy uh, gasoline as much anymore, but I had a higher electricity bill. So solar made a lot of sense and um, I could actually be powering, now I'm powering my house and my car with solar, driving on sunshine, we like to say. <laughs> so um, it's been a really amazing experience and uh, feels really good as well as I'm saving a lot of money not having to buy gas and, and having the solar produce enough energy for the house and the car. So you're really producing enough energy for both? Yeah. Wow. And now that it's in the summer, actually right now with the long days, I'm actually overproducing. So I've actually switched to a rate that Edison gives um, any customer called time of use. So I can actually, um, sometimes I charge my car during the day and the solar goes directly into the car, but often I charge it at night and you get a very good rate because uh, electricity can be very cheap at night. Um, so it's about nine cents a kilowatt hour. And then during the day, my solar generates electricity that's worth as much as three or four times as much. So um, it's a way that with an electric car and solar, they're very synergistic technologies and help to pay each other back even faster. So. A lot of people are, um, who are getting electric cars are considering solar. Yeah, definitely makes sense. Yeah. Can you give us an idea of what sort of savings you're talking about? Um, well, it really depends on how much you drive. Um, but oftentimes, if someone has a longer commute, if someone is driving you know, 50 miles a day, um, you can see the most savings. So basically with an electric car, if you're charging it at night, you can drive um, the same amount of miles uh, as in a gasoline car for the equivalent of about $1 per gallon. So that's much cheaper than paying $4 per gallon for gasoline. Um, the reason that you can do that is because electric cars are much more efficient. So when you go to the car dealer and you look at a different electric cars and you look at the EPA's um, mileage sticker on there, oftentimes they're over 100 miles per gallon equivalent because the electric motor is so much more efficient than an internal combustion engine. Think about, um, you know, when you drive an electric car, there's no pollution coming out of a tailpipe, there's no heat, there's not much noise, um, that's all waste. Mm. And so the electric motor is, is just much more efficient and that's why it's so much cheaper to drive an electric car. Fantastic, well you're a great, a great example of how this program is, is, is such a success for consumers. Now, Michael, you've also done quite a bit of other work with the CEC, mm -hmm. um, particularly, as you mentioned, Earth Day. I hear that that is something that's extraordinary and started here in Santa Barbara, and you've had a lot to do with that. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so um, CEC puts on Earth Day every year, and um, it's in Alameda Park. We had almost uh, 40,000 people come out this year and um, over 200 uh, community businesses and nonprofits that are displaying and educating the public. Um, and so it's a really great opportunity for Santa Barbara residents just to come out, learn a lot about the environment, have some fun, build community, meet their friends, eat some local food. They can tour the green car show that I put on where they can see um, over 40 different electric and hybrid cars. You can even test drive them. Uh, you can learn uh, about solar from all the solar installers um, and then a lot of other green businesses there. Uh, we have a great uh, stage with mostly local music, uh, the organic uh, beer and wine garden, all kinds of good stuff at, at Earth Day, stuff for, for the kids to do. So it's really one of the big major events um, in terms of festivals that happen in Santa Barbara every year. And what's the main goal of the festival other than it's just a great day out for the family? For us, the main goal is really to, um, first of all, bring the community get together and have a lot of fun, but also to really educate about environmental issues. And um, when we do surveys after we find that a lot of the attendees are really coming to learn about all the great work that's being done in, in the community um, for environmental and, and green related issues. Um, so we actually publish a whole guide that um, will guide uh, attendees through the festival where starts out by if you can come arrive car free then you get a prize and you can take a survey um, so and then you can go th through and do different things such as learning about solar or doing a kids activity that's environmentally focused or 
playing with the solar powered uh, slot cars in the green car show. Um, so it's a way that people can learn about all the environmental things that are going on in, in the community. Wonderful. Jefferson, what are some of the other programs or projects that the CEC is working on? Yeah, so the CEC works uh, primarily around renewable energy, um, sustainable transportation, banning the use of single-use plastics, and then also eating local and celebrating our, our local food systems. So Michael's done a lot of work around sustainable transportation so that our communities are developed not so that people can just drive around, but so that people can also bike around and walk around. And then also shifting our vehicle fleet so that we're using vehicles that are no longer necessarily powered by gasoline, but so that electric vehicles are now a viable option or hybrid vehicles are becoming increasingly more popular. So uh, with regards to s plastics, um, earlier in April this year, we were able to help push through a ban of pl single use plastic bags in the city of Santa Barbara. So in supermarkets, you're no longer seeing these plastic bags, which are actually made from oil. A lot of people don't know that and end up basically in the ocean. So we're able to ban those as well as we have a program called Rethink the Drink, where we go into local schools and put in filtered refilling stations and distribute water bottles so that kids are actually using usable water bottles as opposed to the single use plastic bottles and bottled water. So. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic. What sort of projects do you have coming up that you're working with Allen Energy on? So right now we work with Allen on around energy efficiency and around our solar programs. Mm -hmm. So Allen was selected for our Solarize Santa Barbara program as our partner. Uh, and they've been a fabulous partner and they've already helped 20 homeowners in Santa Barbara go solar through the Solarize program. Uh, and the nice thing about Allen is that they take a sort of holistic look at someone's home. So, so they're gonna look at ways that you can do energy efficiency improvements first and then add solar. So that one, you can save money by having to put a smaller solar system up and then your home is performing more efficiently. What, what, sort, of, what sort of adjustments can be made? Can I maybe? Oh, yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you can, can please. Uh, and Jefferson knows a lot about this as well. It's actually a, a program we've been a part of since the beginning. It's a statewide program called Energy Upgrade California. It's administered by the utility companies and the, the state, the CPUC, public utilities. And CEC has been a big part of that program as well and to make sure that this information gets out to the residents of the South Coast. And uh, what the program does is it allows us to do it essentially gives homeowners rebates to do things like fix their water heaters and upgrade their furnaces so they're not only um, safer and healthier to, to operate but more efficient so they'll, they'll heat your home and not use as much natural gas so this is all part of the the plan um, for us as a business but also you know CEC and supporting energy efficiency to reduce before you produce that's really our motto and yes we want to put up as much solar as possible and have everyone powered by the sun but the, the reality is that if we can do things like replace lighting with LED lighting that looks good and people like to, to have some of the old energy efficient bulbs, people didn't really adopt as, as much as some of the newer stuff on the market. Um, pool pumps, where pool pumps can use a ton of power so we can do things that the payback, the ROI is much quicker on, on some of this stuff. And then we combine that with solar. So overall, this is the, we present the, the most financially um, feasible, sensible case to, to do these upgrades. Um, not to mention you get rebates through Energy Upgrade California. You can also get financing through the County of Santa Barbara, the Empower SBC program, which is financed by Department of Energy. And uh, there's a big push, again, statewide as well as locally to help homeowners and businesses to reduce power consumption and then to go solar. So these are all programs that we work with the CEC on um, because we have aligned missions. You know, our mm. mission is to do the work, to uh, educate and to do feasibility assessments and to do energy audits and to present the, uh, really the, the best packages that make the most sense to homeowners. We don't want to just say every person needs to do this. It's really a case-by-case -case customized solution. Um, and then the CEC is here to provide education, support, advocacy, um, work with us with jurisdictions if there's planning or permitting issues, statewide policy issues. So. It's a great example of kind of a public uh, or nonprofit and a private kind of partnership to uh, promote one common goal. 
when you were mentioning the rebates, it sounds like it's it's just a win-win situation because you're saving money by solarizing, mm. and then um, you're, you're getting rebates. You're getting rewarded yeah. again from from the government for yeah. doing so. Yeah, and one mm. thing to clarify that the solar rebate there was a really good one. Um, it's actually gone now in the state, but there is a federal tax credit. Right. But there is a good rebate for the overall energy efficiency. So right. things like insulation, hot water heaters, furnaces, what we call home performance. It's a kind of a term to let's look at the whole house as a system and let's tune it up and make it work better. Tune the duct work up so it doesn't leak 30 to 50 percent, which is what we find when we test these systems. So you take your car in maybe every three or four months to get the oil changed and to check tire pressures, make sure it's working getting the gas mileage or electric mileage. Um, but to, this isn't usually done in homes. And so that's really the service we provide is to make sure that the, uh, the homes are getting the, the, the mileage, if you will, um, to make them last longer and, and use less energy. Yeah. Right, Michael, have you adopted some of these, um, these ideas that Sean's been talking about here? Um, my house is a pretty good a newer heater. I uh, don't use it very much. I actually had Allen Associates come um, when, when I first bought the house and they did a whole uh, a whole house inspection kind of showing me some of the things. So yeah, I, I did some sealing around some of the um, some of the air sealing, but in general I don't use a lot of um, a lot of heat or energy in the home. The main ways that I use energy were electricity as well as gasoline in a car. So that's why my main uh, investments that I wanted to do to cut my energy use were for solar to, and getting the electric car so I didn't have to spend the money on electricity and gasoline. And I guess that comes back to your point, Sean, that it's not one rule for every person, mm -hmm. that you customize it for yeah. each, each family and for each home. Absolutely. If someone says that they're overheating in their house and you look at their energy bill and they're, they have an air conditioning, an obvious air conditioning demand in the summertime, which we can see on electric bills where their electricity gets really expensive during the summer, that's when we have the case where, yeah, maybe you need some insulation or we need to do that work. But like Michael said, there's no air conditioning in yeah. my house. <laughs> yeah. And that's a reality that um, we definitely we see in Santa Barbara and the work that we do is that the other energy efficiency work doesn't always pencil out as well. Often the houses need to be fixed not for energy efficiency and payback, but because the heater is 30 years old and it might present a safety or carbon monoxide issue or they just want to upgrade the systems and get them, you know, up to current standard and code. So there's, there's always a good argument for comfort, for safety, uh, for health, indoor air quality. Um, but we, in terms of um, if you're making an investment purely off of let's, let's find the best savings and the payback, then it's something we definitely, we take that approach where we say, well, yeah, you don't have any heating or cooling needs here. Your energy bill is, is for your refrigerator, your lights, your computers, your spa, um, and your car. Well, let's, we can't do anything to, to use less energy there. Let's install solar and offset everything. And that's, that's when that becomes a, a no brainer. That's yeah. fabulous. Now, um, Jefferson, you, apart from all the other busy things you're doing, you get out and, and speak a lot to the community. Yeah. What are some of the messages that you're trying to get out there? Yeah, so Sean touched on it a little bit, but I think education is extremely important around solar. A lot of people don't understand that solar is accessible to them and that solar can help them save money. So as part of our Solarize program, we conduct homeowner workshops throughout the Central Coast. And by now we've spoken to probably 1,200 homeowners. And we basically explain how solar works. We take a look at a bill so that you can understand how going solar helps you save money. And through that education, people start to realize that this is something that previously I didn't think even could apply to me, but would actually work and could help me save. And so we see more and more people adopting solar, which is the mission of the program. And uh, these workshops have been incredibly rewarding. I mean, after the workshops, people come up with me, come up to me and shake my hand and say, you know, thank you, I, I really understand solar right now. And so, and so with that education, you know, we like to see more solar roofs. And around transportation, it's the same way. I mean, Michael hosts green car shows where people can come and interact with people that are already driving electric. And I think that that's important. It's not necessarily people like Michael or Sean or myself speaking in front of people, it's also getting them interacting with their peers. And so 
what we do on our website is we post case studies and blogs of your neighbors that have gone solar, your neighbors that are driving on sunshine or done energy efficiency movements. And so they can read about their story and the savings that they've seen and the benefits that they've seen. And so, and it's easy to relate to that. Great. Now, yeah. what what is that website for those people who do want to read some more? Yeah, so cecsb.org is our, our general website. Um, specific to solar, we do cecsolarize.org. And okay. so we have all those case studies. And we also have get started guides with a bunch of education that you can read through so you can understand all these things. And of course, they can always call us as well. And the phone number's on the website. That's wonderful. That's yeah. wonderful. Well, we're almost uh, out of time, guys. I just wondered, is there a message that each of you would like the viewers to take away from today's conversation? Really, driving on sunshine is an amazing feeling and helps out both uh, society and in the environment in so many ways. And I just really encourage people to look at all the electric cars out there. There's over a dozen of them on the market here, and they're very affordable now. You can lease them for as little as $200 a month. Um, and there is a California rebate that pays uh, $2,500, which can often cover a down payment. So people look at their uh, gas savings from uh, driving electric and uh, they can make it pencil out really well and then maybe think about going solar as well and, and not have to buy gasoline or electricity anymore. Wonderful. Sean? I'll, I'll try to make my message quick. It's, uh, you know, this is doable. It's all extremely doable. It makes financial sense. It helps the environment. The technology is tried and true. It's been a long, around for a long time. And it's something that as young homeowners or folks that have had their house for 50, 100 years, it's, it's something that, 100 years, um, homes that are older, um, every house could benefit from consultation and from looking at the systems and try to, to reduce the carbon footprint, save money, um, and just encourage all the homeowners in, in the South Coast and business owners to look at their energy efficiency options, look at what's available for rebates, and talk to contractors or the local environmental groups that are, are working on these, uh, these issues to see what's possible. Yeah. And I would just echo what Sean said that you know, things like going solar are accessible and they can offer benefits to homeowners that didn't think that they really could capture those benefits. And I think it's just important to start that discussion get educated and you know we would be happy to talk to anybody that wants to learn about these things. That's wonderful. And what was the website again? Uh, CECSB.org. Wonderful. Well guys, it's been great having you with us today. Thank you so much for sharing your stories and all the best with the programs. Yeah, thank you, A lot Christine. of exciting things coming up. Thank you. Thank you. And if you'd like to see this show or other TVSB culture programming, go to our website at tvsb.tv. I'd like to thank all of our crew. We have both volunteers and staff who come together to make this show possible. And for you guys at home, don't forget to join us next time for the 805 Focus, where we focus on the people, the events and topics that matter to the South Coast. I'm Christine Davis for TVSB. See you next time.